Once again today we greet you in the lovely name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We welcome you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. May God bless you. We welcome our visitors. Always glad to have people to visit with us in the Northside Baptist Church. Now you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Church right here in Athens, Georgia. And this is Preacher Edward speaking, and I'm hoping today we can be an inspiration to everyone. I want you to take your Bible, turn to 2 Kings chapter 7. It's page 429 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. If you don't have a good Schofield Reference Bible, the original, you ought to get you one. Sell your coat and get you one. Sell your dog. Sell your cat. Get you a good Schofield Reference Bible. Turn to page 429. I have a few in my study that I can save you about $10 on each Bible if you're interested in the Schofield Reference Bible. Not in the Bible selling business, but I try to accommodate those that like to save a little. If I have a few on hand, I do have a few on hand. Now, if God spares me to the last day of this month, which will be Wednesday week, and I'm on the air, that will complete 40 years of daily broadcasting from Athens, Georgia. We went on the air on the first day of September in 1948. We've been on daily since that time. God put us on. God has kept us on. God has taken care of the financial phase of it through his people. And we're working together in getting out the gospel. Now I'd like for you to write a letter of appreciation. If you appreciate the fact we've been on the air 40 years. Then write to him and let me know. Do me a lot of good. There may be some of you that like to make a contribution of a dollar for each year that we've been on there. Now, if you have done that in the uh, days gone by, years gone by, some few weeks ago, a few months ago now, I had printed my book on the 52.7, uh, 52 seven point outlines on the Holy Spirit, and that cost me almost $600, and I still never got enough funds in to pay the for printing it, and it may be when you write it, you think about that. That'll help us in that manner, help us keep on, on the air, and we continue to get God's work done. And so if you'd like to have that book on the Holy Spirit, you can write in and get it for a gift of $4. Just say, Preach Edward, send me the book on the 52 seven-point outlines on the Holy Spirit. we we'll get it right in the mail to you. If you'd like to have a Brother Lewis's book on the Song of Solomon, you ought to get that book. That, that's a masterpiece. Send some extra and request the book, and he'll mail it to you. And if you'd like to have a brochure on our proposed Holy Land tour for next year, write in and get the brochure. If you'd like to have a list of our tape, we have some 343 listed, or some 340 listed, rather, and the tape today will be tape number 344. I'm speaking on the subject, why sit here till we die? That'll be my subject today, why sit here till we die? And you can get this message, you can get the singing and the music on cassette tape, and you can write in and get the tape for a gift of $3 to help defray our radio expense. Just say, Preach Edward, send me tape number 344. Uh, send me the tape on why sit here till we die and we get it right in the mail to you now my mailing address is Virgil Edwards P.O. Box 501 Athens Georgia 30603 is the zip code number that's Virgil Edwards P.O. Box 501 write in and get these books Athens Georgia of course and then the zip code is 30603 we'd like to hear from you I hope you have that Bible open in 2 Kings chapter 7. I was reading the other day about this man that trained bird dogs. He trained a bird dog for a friend. And when the friend went to pick up his dog, he carried him out to see how he would work. And he went out in the field, came to a clump of bushes, and the dog lay down and rolled over one time. 
The trainer said, there's one quail in, that, in those bushes there, and sure enough, that was right. Went a little further, another bush, patch of bushes, and the dog uh, pointed, lay down, rolled over three times. He said, there's three quail there in that clump of bushes, and sure enough, it was right. Went on, and the dog came to another bunch of bushes and pointed, then he uh, lay down, rolled over five times. The trainer said, there's five quail there in those bushes. Sure enough, he was right. Went on a little further, came to another bunch of bushes, and the dog pointed. Then he went out there and grabbed a stick in his mouth, started running around, running around the trainer. And the owner of the dog said, what does he mean by that? He's telling you there's more quail in those bushes than you can shake a stick at. <laughs> now, that's a pretty good bird dog, don't you think so? I would think so. All right, 2 Kings chapter 7, beginning with verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. And there were four leprous men at the entering end of the gate. They said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we'll enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, we shall die there. If we sit still here, we'll die also. Now therefore come and let us fall under the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. When they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. They said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the king of the Hittites, the kings of the Egyptians, to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and the horses and the asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the other part of the camp, they went into one tent. They did eat, they drank, and carried tents silver and gold and raiment, and went and hid it, came again and entered into another tent and carried this also, and went and hid it. And they said one to another, We do not well... This day is a day of good tidings, and we'll hold our peace. If we tear to the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now, therefore, come that we may go and tell the king's household. Now, that's reading from 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 1 through 9. Look at the latter part of verse 3. Why sit we here until we die? I want that to sink in. Why sit we here till we die. Now we can sit around and twiddle our thumbs and play church until the church dies if we're not willing to do something and move on for God and get the job done. Now here in Samaria there was a great famine. A famine so badly until they even killed their children and boiled them and ate them. One lady did in particular. And of course that stirred the old king up. He didn't, he didn't like that, of course. And the Assyrians were surrounding the, the city of Samaria. They were on great starvation and famine and they eaten anything they'd get their hands on. They were dying. They were in a bad predicament. And the Assyrians was trying to starve them out. And they just about had the job done until this woman, these two women got together and they agreed. They had two little children. One said, now we'll boil my child today and we'll eat good news. There's ever a time when this world needs good news. It's right now. This world's in sad shape today. I'm not a pessimist. I'm a truthist. I'm telling you what the Bible teaches. This world's in sad shape today. There's never been a time like this day in which we live. And the world needs good news. We need to get out the good news to a lost and dying world. And so the man of God gives forth good news. He said there'll be barley 
and the neat flower here about this time tomorrow. Then that moves us to thought number four. And in thought number four, I want you to notice the king's right hand man did not believe that. The king's right hand man said, I don't believe the preacher. I don't believe what the preacher says. I just don't believe that. Well, you have the unbelievers today that don't believe the things of God. The Bible tells us here in 2 Kings chapter 7 verse 2, Then the Lord in whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. Now here, this man here withstood the preacher. This man here stood, withstood the preacher. Somebody check on that fellow back there, will you please? This man here withstood the preacher and uh, wouldn't believe the preacher. And so we need to realize that the, the, the preacher tells the truth many times and people don't believe the truth that's given. We need to preach the truth, tell the truth, and let people know that the, the truth ought to be given out whether people believe it or not. Now this man did not believe the preacher, did not believe the word of God. This man refused to get the message. This man said, I don't believe what the preacher is telling us. This man said, I don't believe the word of God. And so we need to realize that people don't believe the word of God many times and they die and go to hell because they don't believe the word of God. Now this man said, I don't believe that there'll be food here in this place tomorrow at this time. Well, we can preach the gospel. We can preach the word of God. We can give the truth of God out. And some will believe and some will not believe. Amen. Now we need to realize that and know that. But that doesn't stop us. We've got to just keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on until God uses his word and God's word is fulfilled and, and we need to realize that. But he didn't believe it. He didn't believe it. Now you may say, preach Edwards, I don't believe in hell. Does that change the fact? You may say, preach Edwards, I don't believe the Bible's infallible word of God. Does that change it? Absolutely not. That doesn't change it. The word of God is true whether you believe it or not. The word of God is God's infallible word. And you better believe it. And just because you don't believe it doesn't mean it's not. Somebody might say to me, Preach Edwards, I don't believe there's any such place as Athens, Georgia. I might go, say, up north or out west and talk about Athens. And they say, well, I don't believe there's any such place as Athens, Georgia. I say, well, whether you believe it or not, there is a place called Athens, Georgia. And when you run into some infidel or atheist, and they tell you they don't believe in the Bible, and they don't believe in God, that doesn't change it. That just shows their ignorance and shows that they're dead wrong and, and you just continue believing on. Now, not to believe it doesn't change it whatsoever. In verse 20, this man in his unbelief had to pay a price. And so it fell out unto him, for the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. Now this man that refused to believe the word of God, this man that refused to hear the preacher, this man, the preacher said, because you don't believe this, I'm going to let you see that food, but you'll not be able to eat it. And sure enough, the next day when they brought in the barley and brought in the, the rye and so forth, the, the, um, the meal or whatever they had to eat, this man, the man that the, the old king leaned on his prime minister or his right hand man that did not believe the preacher. Whenever they brought the food in, he was standing there at the gate to give out the food for the people. And they were so hungry until they ran over that man and trampled him to death and he died exactly like God said he would. Or that is the preacher said he would. That preacher said, you don't believe it. But there'll be food here tomorrow, but you won't get to eat any of it. You'll see it, but you won't get to eat it. And so we realized then that that very thing came to pass, that the man uh, died, trampled 
on the foot of those people starved to death getting to that food and he died. Now a lot of people today, they hear the word of God. They see the churches. They see the Bible. They see Christians. But they don't believe in Jesus Christ. Don't believe in God. And therefore they're not benefited from it. Now you need to realize in order to benefit from the word of God, you've got to believe it. You can't go on in unbelief and not believe the word of God and expect to be blessed and helped and strengthened from the scriptures. You've got to believe it. You must believe it. And if you believe the word of God, you can get something accomplished from the word of God by believing it because it, it gives you life and strength and so forth. And you need to realize that. Now we come to thought number five, and that is the four lepers is here a type of lost sinners. Leprosy in the Bible is always a type of a lost sinner. Now you must keep that in mind. Leprosy is a type of lost sinners. A leprous man, that is, a leprosy is a type of sin. Now there were four lepers, four men that had leprosy, and they were on the outside of the city wall. Now, why were they on the outside? They were on the outside because they were not allowed to remain on the inside. Now, if the, the law of God said in the Old Testament, when a man contracted leprosy, then he was to put out away from the people in a camp to himself along with other lepers and placed out there because it was so contagious that he would give the disease to others. Now, that's a picture of a sinner today. That sinner's in a dying state. Now, those four men were in a dying state. And that's a picture of a sinner today. They are dying. They are dead spiritually and dying physically. And they are on the outside. They're on the outside of the body of Christ. They're on the outside of Jesus. They're on, they're on the outside of the household of faith. Now you need to remember that. They're on the outside. That sin is on the outside of the Lord Jesus. Now, the Bible said they were unclean. And that's a picture of every sinner before God. They were outcasts. That's a picture of every sinner before God. They were starving. That's a picture of a sinner without God. Starving spiritually. And they knew nothing to do but just sit there and die. What can a poor lost sinner do for himself? He can't save himself. And he's just dying gradually, physically, he's already dead spiritually. And so they were just sitting there and they said, why sit we here till we die? Now that question can be asked any church today, any body of believers. Now we can sit around and sing, I shall not be moved and twiddle our fingers and play church and play religion and sing and teach and so forth. But if we don't get up and get out and do something about it, We'll eventually die. That is, we'll die in what I mean. We'll die in number. And maybe gradually just die out to a certain extent spiritually. Get to a low ebb spiritually, if you please. Now, we must be busy about God's business. Now, these men were sitting here. They said, why sit we here till we die? Now, this is what they said. They said, now we're starving to death. If we go on the inside of the city, we can't get any food. There's no food there. There's a camp of Assyrians out here waiting for the people to starve to death or waiting for a certain period of time to attack and said, now, our best chance would be is to go to that camp. He said, if they kill us, we're going to die anyway. If we sit here, we're going to die. If we get on the inside of the wall in Samaria, we're going to die. And our best chance is, is to get over here in the camp of the enemy. And if, we, if they kill us, we're going to die. And so we're going to take a shot at it. And so they decided to go, all four of these men decided to go to the camp of the Assyrians. And when they arrived on the scene, they didn't find an Assyrian soldier there. They all took off and fled. They ran. They were scared to death. You know why? God created a sound in their ears that sounded like armies coming and chariots and horses. And they figured that Israel had hired the Hittites and Israel had hired the Egyptians. And all these armies were coming to capture them. 
And man, they said, we better get going. And they took off. And they left their food. And left many of the, they left the silver and the gold, much of it. Left their clothes. And as they kept running, they'd take some of the clothes off and leave them so they could run faster. And they kept strowing their belongings along the way as they fled, running as fast as they could because they just knew they heard these armies coming. But it wasn't, no, no. It was either the angels of God or God created in their ears that kind of sound that they might run off, that God might fulfill what the preacher said was going to happen. And when those lepers came, they found the camp empty and they were starved to death and they went in and they ate and they ate and they ate and they picked them up some gold and silver and they hid that, by the way, they could pick it up later. They picked them up some new clothes, clean clothes. and Man, they were having a ball. They were having a good time. And then they thought, well, now, today is a day of good tidings. We have some good news. And we need to carry this good news back to Samaria. And the Bible said they rose up in the twilight to go in the camp of the Assyrians. And then when they found the camp empty, then they went to tell the good news. Tell the good news that they had found some food. Tell the good news and found clothing. And they found more than what they went for. Now these four lepers went to get some food. But upon arriving at the camp, in verse 8 it said, When these lepers came to the camp, the other part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and then carried silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came to another tent, and carried tents also, and went and hid it. Now they went and found food, and they ate all they needed. They found a beverage to drink, or probably grape juice or whatnot. They found something to drink, and they drank that. And then they, they got more than they expected. They found more than they went for. They found some gold, which is very precious. They found silver something very precious. They found new raiment, something very nice. What are you saying, preach? I'm telling you, when you come to know Jesus, you don't only come and get the bread of life. You don't only come get the bread, but God gives you many more blessings in addition to what you come for. Is that right, Brother Missionary? That's right. God gives you many more blessings when you come to the Lord than just a salvation. Many blessings. I've received many blessings since I've come to know God. And you have too. And you get more than you expect when you come to know God. Now I want you to notice in the next thought is that God used some very humble people. These four lepers, God used them. They went back to the Samaria there to the gate and told the people what they'd found. And the king would, couldn't hardly believe it. And he sent out a, a couple of chairs to check on the situation. And they kept finding garments and things scattered along the way. They found the camp empty. And they went and gathered all the food and brought it back in. And God used these four lepers, outcasts, dying men, to carry the greatest news they could ever expect back into the village. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 through 29, for well, you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble to call. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to condemn the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised, that God chosen, yea, and which, things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that, that no flesh should glory in his presence. See, God chooses many times the weak things, he said, not many noble to call, not many wise men after the flesh. When God gets ready to send out a preacher or call a preacher or a special worker, God doesn't necessarily, now I'm going to send people out and let them check out the, the university and get some intellectual giants over there that I might have somebody could tell the story. No, no. God calls whom he will. God calls that mill worker. God calls that farmer. God calls that carpenter. God calls that truck driver. God calls whom he will. God doesn't look at your intellect to see what you know and how well educated you are. Now, if God wants to call a highly educated man, he can do that. If he wants to call a man that can't read his name in boxcar letters, 
He'll do that. God calls whom he pleases. God many times picks up a little country plowboy and calls him to preach. That's what he did for me more or less. I was born and reared on a farm until I was 17 years old. Plowed mules, chopped cotton, picked cotton peas, pulled corn, corn fodder. I just worked on the farm. Just a little old country boy. I'm not much of a preacher, but I'm just using that as an illustration. God's called people out of all walks of life to carry the message. And God calls starving lepers to carry the good news. And if God can use these four starving men, God can use you. Now notice, they went and shared the good news, verse 9. Then they said one to another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings. And we'll hold our peace if we tear to a morning light. Some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come that we might go and tell the king's household. So they went. Now they said we just absolutely can't keep all this good stuff to ourselves. And so it is with God's people. You shouldn't keep the good things of God all to yourself. You should tell it. Carry the message. That's why this missionary's family is headed toward England. To carry the message over there. That's, that's why we're supporting missionaries ourselves. To get the message to foreign fields. Carry the message. And there's so much to be done also on the home field. That's why we have support camps. Why we have a jail ministry. And uh, things of that type. The radio ministry. To get the gospel out. We need to tell the good news. That Jesus saves. A wonderful opportunity. Do things for God. I thank God for the 40 years. Almost he's kept me on the air. Last Monday morning. The phone rang. My wife answered. A man seemed with a broken heart. I said to my wife. Said. Uh, uh, is Preach Edwards there? She said yes. He said uh, my wife is in the hospital. And said uh, she'd been listening to him for years. And she wants to see him before she dies. She'd never seen him. She'd heard him, but she'd never seen him. Would he come up that my wife might see him and have prayer with her? And my wife said, yes. And he gave me the room number. And I dressed and went to the hospital and walked in. When I walked in the hospital room, there lay this woman with eyes closed. And she had uh, uh, cancer of the liver. Her face was as yellow as, as could be because of that type of disease in her liver. And there she lay, and when I walked in, I believe it was her daughter said, uh, uh, Preach Edwards is coming in. And when she said that, she roused up, and she looked up at me. And I talked with her a minute or so, and, and uh, she was so glad that I came. They came up around Mount Airy, Georgia. And uh, she had never seen me before, but she wanted to see me before she died. That was her request to her husband. I want to see Preach Edwards before I die. And so I had prayer with her. Now, when I prayed with her, I wanted to say a few more words to her. And after I finished my prayer, I looked at her, and she looked like she was asleep. And she, I couldn't rouse her up. She, could, she, she never said anything further. And uh, I talked a few moments with her daughter and her daughter-in-law. And I went out of the hall to speak to her husband. He was standing down at the end of the hall. I walked down, induced myself, and he grabbed my hand. Tears running down his cheeks. He said, Preacher, I'm so glad you came to see her. Said she wanted to see you before she died. And so I'm just so glad that you come. I said, Sir, I'm just so glad that I could come and try to be a little blessing. And I said, We have prayed and we have prayed for you. And we're going to continue to do so. And the dear old gentleman, with tears in his eyes, gripped my hand and said, Preacher, I'm so glad that you come to see us today. Oh, beloved, listen, we have the good news. We have the gospel message. And we have what people need. And we need to get it out. These poor lepers said, why sit we here till we die? Why are we going to sit around? We're saved. Why sit around sinners going to hell? And why sit around until we die? We need to get busy and stay busy for the dear Lord. That's a great reunion one time. Family reunion, and the father of the family was about ready to leave the world. And during that day, he called his children all around him, and he knew he wouldn't be here but just a short period of time. And as the boys came by, the older son, he came and 
spoke to his daddy and said, Daddy, it's good to be with you today. Daddy said, Son, I won't be here long. I'm soon be gone, and, and I won't be with you any more reunions down here, but I do want to meet you on the other side. And he said, uh, I will have a great reunion over there. He said, uh, Good night, son. I'll see you in the morning. The boy walked on, and one by one, the children came by. The finally, the baby boy came by, and dad talked with him, and, and uh, the baby boy had been standing in line to speak to daddy. And so whenever he got ready to leave, the daddy said, Goodbye, son. The boy started to walk away and said, Dad, uh, why did you tell me goodbye? You told the others, Good night. You'll see them in the morning. He said, Son, you know, you know you're not saved. And your brothers, they're saved. And you're not saved, so I'll meet them in the morning. But son, I have no assurance I'll meet you in the morning. I have no assurance you're going to be there in that great reunion when our family meets in heaven. Little boy, the boy started crying. He's a young man. He started crying and he said, Daddy, Daddy, I, I, I want to be with you on the other side. And Mama, and I, I want to be with my brothers. And I want to be in the reunion over there. Daddy said, Son, you'll have to get saved. He said, Dad, I do want to be saved. Fell down on his knees, gave his heart to God, kissed his dad, started to walk away. The dad said, Good night, son. I'll see you in the morning. He said, Good night, Daddy. I'll see you on the way he went. Why sit ye here till you die? Why sit we here till we die? The fields are white on the harvest. Never been a time when the opportunity has been any greater. People are dying every day going to hell. Why sit we here till we die? God bless you. You've listened well. Let's stand to our feet. Our Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll speak to hearts, that you'll have your way, that Jesus might be honored. God, why do we sit around till we die when so much needs to be done? Help us individuals to take courage and determine as an individual that we're not going to sit around till we die. If others want to do so, that's a matter between them and God. But help us as individuals not to be willing to go and not sit around till we die. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Debbie's going to play for us a couple of stanzas as she plays. If you're here today and you're not right with God or you want to join this church, you want to come back to God for any reason. If you feel you need to come forward, you come on and we'll help you while she plays a couple of stanzas. God is speaking to your heart and fears you obey it. Mm-hmm. 